Um, tell me how you got interested in writing science fiction. What's the background that brought you there? Um, it was it was kind of on a lark, honestly. I I'd been reading science fiction as a science fiction fan from a very small child, um, but I had a cool dream, a cool science fiction dream, and was talking to a friend about it who said, "You should write that. You should write that as a story. And try and publish it." And, and I was in my 30s. I mean, I had never written anything before except you know, psychology papers. And just thought, I'm going to try this. And sat down and wrote it and had it rejected probably a dozen times. But I was hooked. I just, I had such a good time writing it that as soon as I finished it, I was like, well, what am I going to write next? I need to come up with another story. Tell me about Defenders. Defenders is about uh, an alien invasion and the aliens can read human minds. And they're not that well armed, um, but if you can read your enemy's mind, and that was kind of what I was exploring, if you can read your enemy's minds, uh, it's really hard to fight someone who knows which way you're gonna point your gun and what you're gonna do next all the time. And so they're slowly taking over the world. And then it turns out that there, there is this secret project to create new, genetically engineered super warriors missing the one neurotransmitter in the brain that allows the aliens to read our minds. Mm -hmm. So they can't read these super warriors' minds. And uh, millions of these things are made secretly underground at Easter Island where they couldn't, you know, and no one goes in or out so nobody can pick it out of a human's mind. And that's, you know, trying to do that so that it, no, you never get crossed up. Um, and <clears throat> The Defenders, this is kind of giving away, this happens about a third of the way through, the Defenders defeat the aliens. The real twist, and I think this is why it got attention and um, you know, has been doing well, the twist is what do you do with millions of super warriors who, who turn out to be kind of damaged psychologically because you made them very quickly and you're messing with their brain chemistry. What do you do with them? One of the things I do find myself doing, and it's, it's fun with William and Mary students because they're so damn bright, um, is to be able to go a little <clears throat> further out and, you know, when I'm teaching uh, the brain and physiology, <clears throat> to talk about fMRIs where you do brain imaging <clears throat> and then to say, imagine 30 years from now, and then to give them some of the cutting edge research and to talk with them about where it might lead. And so that's, you know, there I get some science fiction in. And, you know, they seem to enjoy that, where it's not just, you know, here's what's in the textbook, but here's what could happen. You know, if you can, you know, if this part of the brain detects anomalies, how long will it be before we have a foolproof lie detector? And how is that gonna change the world? And this is probably gonna be in your lifetime. If you, someone asks you what you do and you say, I'm a writer, it surprised me, but they almost seem embarrassed for you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, it, it was odd, you know, at first. And I would have, like, you know, if <clears throat> uh, a relative was with me, um, they might hop in over my shoulder and say, and he also teaches at William and Mary, you know, because that's legitimate, you know, and it's, in a way it's nice to have it, to be able to say, yeah, I'm a writer, I also teach um, psychology classes adjunct at William and Mary, 